Hi guys, in today's episode we're going to talk about running your electrical wiring inside your conversion van. If you look around you can see that we have most if not all of our wiring already in place. So for the 110 uh, volt system, uh, we went with a regular household wire um, like this. So this is 110 12 to wire sheeted. I would not recommend going with that. Uh, when, we, when we started running it, we already had it cut it into pieces. So we were not able to return it. And the reason we wanted to return it is that it's way too stiff. We thought we were going to, to be able to go with a wire loom. However, because we got the solid wire for 110, it just wasn't working out. It's pretty much impossible to put this stuff through this inside this small space. It just, it just keep get, it keeps getting caught onto the, onto the little ribs on the wire loom. So what we did, instead of just uh, replacing all of this solid wire, uh, we only used the wire loom on pressure points, where it could actually press against uh, the sharp, me sharp metal and get cut. Uh, we have wire loom in those spaces. And you should be able to see that right up here. Uh, I'll try to put in a little picture-in-picture um, -picture video. Of what it looks like so we're not sure if that's going to work uh, we also uh, put it in place with some electrical tape so it doesn't slide uh, as we drive down the road that might not be the best solution if you guys have any ideas on how to fix this uh, please leave a comment below So we assumed that we would be able to get this, uh, this wire into a wire loom inside here and basically everywhere. And there's just no way that that could, that could work. It's way too stiff. Just running one wire had us sore everywhere. It was, uh, it was definitely not worth it. So if you're going to, uh, to be running a 110 system, which I assume everyone will, because I mean, you need to you need to run on your electric unless you go with propane uh, with a propane stove. But if you decide to 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 go with 110, we would definitely recommend going with a stranded wire like this. This is a uh, 12 volt uh, volt wire for the 12 volt system. It is stranded and it was a joy to work with. It was really great to work with. It's very flexible. We had no problems getting getting it to all those areas so this this worked out great this one not so much now we're definitely not professionals if if we're not doing something right please let us know leave a comment below and uh, we'll be glad to see what we're doing wrong <laughs> we did watch a lot of YouTube videos on conversions but that does not make us experts so so please let us know if we're messing up somewhere now the reason we chose 12 gauge is because 12 gauge wire is capable of uh, running 20 amps of electric so we have the 12 volt 12 gauge wire here so we're going to be able to run up to 12 uh, 20 amps on this you do not want to go any lower just remember the lower the gauge the thicker the wire is um, so let's say if you if you do do not do 14 gauge or 16 gauge or even god forbid 18 gauge that wire is way too thin and if, if you try putting something like 15 amps through it, it's just going to burn out. So you don't want to do that. But once you go with a 12 gauge or even even 10 gauge wire, uh, your amperage could be higher. Right? Up to 20, uh, I guess maybe with, uh, correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. But I think with uh, 10 gauge, you would be able to go up to 25 amps but don't quote me on that i know for sure that the 12 gauge is capable of 20 amps so we'll be we'll be sticking with that and we're really glad that we got a stranded one since it's a lot easier to play with and when we first started running the wire 
uh, we decided to go with a step drill bit um, to drill some holes. Uh, we had to use a Dremel. No, oh, this is sharp. Uh, we had to use a Dremel to uh, make this hole bigger so we could get the wire in there. However, the ribs are enclosed at the ends, so we needed to drill a hole. We decided to go with a uh, step drill bit, and it sounded like a great idea, but it wasn't. Up here, uh, towards the ceiling of the van, those ribs, that metal is really close to the outside shell of the van. So if you try to get a hole with this, you might accidentally punch right through to the outside and you really don't want to do that because it would be a huge mess. This might work out good on the lower parts of the van, like here, because you need to drill this way. Uh, just a lengthwise. So this, you could definitely use this step bit on those sides to run the wiring. So to deal with that problem, uh, drilling holes up here in the ribbing, we had to go out and get a uh, hole saw bit, just like this. And this worked beautifully. It worked out really well. We were able to run the wire really quickly and we were able to put rubber gaskets in here to prevent the wire from getting cut on the sharp metal. So that way the sharp metal doesn't bite into the wire and just make the whole thing electrified. I'm sure it wouldn't have happened anyway since there's going to be GFIs on this and breakers. But you don't want to risk it. So this was good. Uh, definitely put, uh, put uh, rubber gaskets. I'll show you in a, in a second. You should be able to see this here. So here's the um, rubber gasket. So the rubber gaskets are working out pretty well. Now, another important thing to figure out when running your electrical system, or actually it's not the electrical system yet. Uh, another important uh, thing to remember when running your wiring is to figure out where everything is going to be placed. So we have, uh, we have this wire 12 volt running here uh, for the pod lights that we're going to have. There's another piece of it. Well, this, this goes all the way up to the front, basically. So we could have a switch down there to turn on the lights. And there's going to be a switch back here so we go, it could be shut off from the bed as well. This one right here is going to be for, just as a safeguard for the future, in case we want to upgrade our maxer fan to an actual AC unit, if the two fans that we have are not going to be working out good enough for us, then we'll have the option to just uh, change it without having to run the wire, uh, to run the wire and take apart the walls to do it. It should fit in the same cavity as the fan does. I believe it's 14 by 14 inches. We have some 110 here running for the TV or the computer. So we have that in place, so that's going to be here. We're going to get uh, reading lights on either side here. And we have one running for our induction cooktop. So the induction cooktop has a wire in place already. So, uh, so that's good. And we have 110 uh, running towards the front for uh, 110 volt outlets. So definitely draft out a sketch of uh, where all your light switches are going to be, uh, where all your appliances are going to be, and have that wire uh, in place. So that way you don't forget to run anything and then end up pretty much screwing yourself because you have all the walls up and really no easy access to run this. Towards the end, we decided to just uh, run the wiring using zip ties with, um, with little anchors and double-sided uh, double tape from 3M. And this, this stuff is not budging, it's not going anywhere. And it's going to be nicely hidden once we put the insulation in on that side. So all in all, this was much easier to do than running this and you have a lot less damage to the body of your van. Now, with this than you do with doing it this way. 
And obviously, you're probably going to have a uh, solar system on the roof, some, some panels. Um, you're going to have to have a control panel for this. Um, that would tell you the health of your batteries and how you're doing with power. Remember to make sure to, to run a telephone wire for data from the area of where your batteries are going to be, in our case it's right here, to where you want to have the panel with the readouts. In our case it's going to be up front by the passenger, well, up front by the driver's side on the wall of the shower. So, so we run this uh, white telephone wire, we have it in place so that way that way we don't have to worry about it in the future, it's already here. So this is our central hub, this is where the batteries are going to be and um, uh, the breaker box, all the electrical system is going to be right here under the bed. So that's why all the wiring is finishing or rather starting uh, right from this spot. Make sure to label all your wires, that way you don't have to wonder what's going where. Label it on both ends, um, we've already done that, so, so we all ready to have, to have everything in place. So this would be for lights, front fan, fan in the back, uh, I guess hot water heater and the toilet. And then this 110 volt wiring is going to be for all the 110 volt stuff like the AC, um, induction cooktop and, um, and the outlets. Also remember to have your data wire in place. We have it right here. Whatever we didn't use is just bundled up. Once we get all the rattle trap in place, it should be really nice and quiet in here. There shouldn't be any rattling from the, from the wiring. So I think that's it for today, guys. If you have any comments, leave them below. Click subscribe and take care.